All right, 3.04 the time. I want to get right to it. Um, she was sent home during National School Walkout Week over gun violence. Everybody remembers that. What did she do? She was a school teacher. She simply questioned how Rockland High School would react if a pro-life walkout were to happen. She's a history teacher based in Rockland, California, said her goal was to open up dialogue in her classroom last week, but was instead placed on paid administrative leave because two complaints from parents. She wanted to discuss with her students the question of whether, hey, is it appropriate for a school to support gun violence protests if it wouldn't support other types of protests? That seems pretty common sense to me. Um, With me is Julianne Benzel. Am I pronouncing your name, ma'am? Yes, sir, you are. Nice okay. To, nice to talk to you. Hey, very happy you could join us today. Um, so so tell me how this happened. I, in other words, you you address the class, I would assume, and ha- what? take me from there. Okay, well, so the protest was on Wednesday, March 14th. And so the Thursday and Friday prior, I have two different sets of students that I see on different days. So um, on the 8th and 9th, I just you know, wanted to make sure I had a premonition that they maybe were not aware of the protest and would have just walked out of class, you know, just to follow the herd and like, what are we doing out of class? Right. Right. So I, I surveyed them and just said, are you guys aware of what's happening next Wednesday? And pretty much 98% of them had no idea. And and to back that up, I've got recordings uh, from the Los Angeles walkouts where they just went through the the crowd. Nobody was on the same page. They had no idea. Correct. Something about assault weapons, something about uh, Trump is worse than Hitler. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody w- was on the same page. I was amazed. So go ahead. That You were right, well, obviously. Yeah. To, well, to reiterate your point there, um, I'm just keeping it real because I've been teaching these darling high school students for 20 years. Um, the average high school student, you know, if they have an opportunity to get up and walk out of class for 20 minutes, they don't care what the issue is, right? They're out of class. So I wanted to make sure, because I teach advanced placement, that my students were informed and they actually were going to make a reasoned choice whether to get up or not. So, and, you know, unfortunately, this was all under the guise of remembering the 17 victims, which if that was actually what it was, our entire school could have and would have done a beautiful tribute at lunchtime before school, something of that. But all you have to do is look at the website and see that this was completely a protest against guns. So I said, this is a brief overview to my students. I said, go look at it yourself, make your own informed decision on what you're going to do. And I said, go have a dialogue with your parents. I'm a parent. I would want to know if my student was going to get up and walk out of class for 20 minutes to protest anything, quite frankly. And then I just opened up this question. Again, this was like a five to seven minute whole ordeal at the beginning of class. We went on to talk about the Korean War. So this is not some elaborate lesson plan. It was a brief discussion. Um, I just said, what do you guys think? Is this appropriate for schools, not just our school, but any school, uh, to basically not only support but facilitate um, protests during school time? You do know that Uh, you're in the state of California, right? Yes. Okay. All I right. am well aware. I've been I've been teaching here for 20 years, and trust me, it's been a very hostile environment um, for all 20 years. But I just kind of it was just kind of exhausting, to be honest with you. And I thought, you know what? I am pretty sure that this this was for any other protest, it would not be condoned. And so I just threw it out there, like, what do you guys think? And my students are super intelligent. They totally understood. Like, wait a second, we can't have a double standard here. If we're going to get up and, and walk out for gun protests, yeah. And I, I, I obviously used the a, a, a issue of abortion. I said, what if there was a pro-life protest? Like the next day, you know, facetiously, the next day at 10 o'clock for 20 minutes. What, you know, what would your thoughts be on that? So we had a really beautiful exchange. No backlash from all. I had to teach four classes, 120 students, no backlash whatsoever. So then the weekend came and went. Again, Monday I was on campus. Tuesday I was on campus. The protest did not take place until Wednesday. So there was ample time for my administration to come talk to me if there was these complaints or they had a problem. Um, They never asked me one question. They never asked a survey of my students, you know. Um, And um, so Wednesday morning of the protest, they called me that morning and said, you're on administrative leave. They did not tell me initially that it was paid. They just said administrative leave. (laughs) But, you know, I... My husband was concerned, like, is this paid or not? I'm like, I have no idea because I I got put on leave. They didn't tell me for how long, and they didn't tell me what for. 
say, don't come to campus today. And that was the day of the protest. So, I mean, I, I kind of thought, well, maybe I didn't really know, but I was, had a premonition. But yeah, so honestly, none of this would have been out in not only our community or but the entire nation if there was not a very brave reporter who um, this is I mean, the story just is, is honestly kind of fascinating because she happened to be on our campus to film the protest, kind of like see what was happening. Right. And she got wind that a teacher was put on leave. And then my husband and I have been teaching here for 20 years. He's a high school football coach here. So we're very embedded in this community. Everybody knows where we live. We live right behind the high school. So she got a tip off from one of my students. She lives right there. So this brave reporter comes knocking on my door at 3 o'clock. And she's as darling as can be. So, of course, I'm like, sure, come on in. I had no idea what was happening. And that evolved into an interview. And she actually had the media report from my school district that said why I was on leave. So she informed me before my district. <laughs> so it's, all, it's a little mind-numbing, to be honest with you. You know, as I read this, uh, I think to myself, I broadcast it out of uh, San Diego. Uh, for, mm-hmm. oh gosh, 16 and a half years, I flew back and forth from here to there every 10 days. Um, and it doesn't surprise me at all, um, you know, mm-hmm. watching uh, California politics and, and everything that goes wrong in Sacramento. Um, yep. But you, unless I'm mistaken, you didn't discourage them from walking out, did you? No, I did not. In fact, I did not at all. I just sent a challenge and said, I just said, what do you think is just appropriate for school time? And um, I said, yeah, would, you know, if you're going to get up and walk out um, for this protest, would you be comfortable and would you support students who got up and walked out for any other issue? I use pro-life, but then I, I actually went on to say the environment, immigration, like the, the list could go on. Sure. I felt like they were opening a Pandora's box, right? You can't let one group of students walk up and out of class and not another. And so, no, to be very clear, I did not. And I'm not a very intimidating person, so there's no way like a student like intimidated that oh my goodness I can't get up and walk out. And we were told by the administration you can't penalize them, so I didn't have any. I, I was never going to do that anyway, no plans. But um, that's why this was not a neutral like just let the students do what they want. Um, teachers moved around their lesson plans. In fact, I stayed up at 11:15 the night before my husband can attest to this. I actually completely reworked my lesson plan for that day because I knew students would be getting up. And I basically wanted to make sure that it was as disrupt, least disruptive as possible. Um, so I was actually extremely accommodating because I knew some students would. Um, but I guess my administration just thought I was going to be disruptive or I was going to. <laughs> and I don't really know what they were thinking, to be honest with you. Uh, talking with uh, Julianne Benzel, she is the uh, Rockland, California school teacher that was uh, placed on leave, administrative leave, because I guess a couple complaints from parents uh, and students, I'm told. Um, Ms. Benzel, when we come back, I'd like to know how long you were on leave, um, what was said when you returned, and, you know, quite honestly, were all the students, uh, you know, unanimously in favor of this protest, even though they didn't know what it was? Um, 12 minutes after the hour, 312 the time. We'll continue with my guest next on New, <laughs> News Talk 820 WBAP. All right, 16 minutes after the hour. Glad you're along. Uh, your chance to pick up another $1,000 uh, coming up a little bit later. Very pleased to have with me Julianne Benzel. She's been a teacher for some 20 years. Her husband is a football coach. Uh, she didn't discourage the kids from walking out she didn't she didn't say hey you know you can't go or you know come off with some intimidating school teacher type thing she just basically challenged them about the protest um whether it's appropriate for a school to support gun violence protest if it wouldn't support other types of protest uh that sounds like uh that sounds like a learning um moment to me uh ms benzel uh, evidently, a couple parents and maybe some students didn't think so. Well, who complained and why? Well, um, so first of all, just to, to uh, backtrack to what your comment there, um, the California State Framework, it's, a, it's actually a standard that I teach critical thinking. So, you know, I'm trying to do my job <laughs> wait, there. Wait you know? a minute. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> I uh, <know>. The California <laughs> standards say you must teach critical thinking? Yes. Uh, evidently, so that was passed after most of the legislatures uh, uh, were uh, were elected in Sacramento. 
Yeah, maybe we need a, an update to the framework. Wow. I don't know, but nonetheless, um, to answer your question, um, so when this all kind of started to unfold, and I'm really, really, really genuinely grateful for news outlets like yourself because I, I, I have no idea how this stuff works. But once that local reporter did an evening news, um, you know, it just got blasted, I guess, to the rest of the country. And there was so much outrage um, on the part of not only my local community, because I've been teaching for 20 years and I have an unscathed record. And um, so my current students and parents, but also like students from 5, 10, 15 years prior just came to my vehement defense but also people from out the country. And so my district was so overwhelmed by the backlash and the outrage that they never even told me what I like. Again, this was under the guise of your, you know, we have some complaints here, Um, (laughs) but they never even like officially, like there's no discipline, but that they just like wanted to kind of clean this up was, were their words. Out of sight, out of mind, uh, so to speak. Exactly. So to be honest with you, it's a little frightening to think what would have happened if, that reporter didn't knock on my door. And I didn't answer it. Um, I just, you know, things were de- definitely on my side as far as that taking place. Um, but when they did sit down with me and say, well, we had student parents and complaints, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, if every teacher was on administrative leave who had student parents and complaints or, you know, like there'd be no teacher in the classroom. Give me a break. But whatever. Show me the evidence. So they put before me these two written statements by these students who one was about three quarters of a page and one was literally a paragraph. And if a student is generally going to go down to the office and complain, they're going to go for it, right? Oh, they're sure. Write like yeah. an essay. So I saw the paragraph and I thought, that doesn't seem quite right. Well, all of that to say that I did go back to school on Monday to teach. Um, it was wonderful to see my students be back in the classroom. But um, on that Thursday, just before break, um, one of the parents of the students whose evidence was used against me actually initiated a, a meeting. And um, they sat down with me and said both the students did not go down voluntarily um, to complain. They were called out of class and asked to write down um, the administration, a uh, vice principal. Oh, man. I know, oh, right? Wow. It's, it's like, again, I don't use that word loosely frightening, but literally like the abuse of power at the high school level, like what? And I'm really um, um, kind of protective of my students. And so to know that my students and this were, were manipulated basically to use as evidence against me, like really, really set me the wrong way. And the parent actually said that, that our students were used as quote pawns. That was his words um, in the effort to target you. So the evidence is flipping, um, unfortunately, against the administration. And uh, I'm not honestly sure where it's going to go from here. Well, it sounds to me you... like maybe a teacher complaint is in order. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm using my critical thinking skills. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You might get in trouble. Hey, listen, you know, I know California is as different as um, as apples and crescent wrenches from Georgia. Um, but boys and girls at Hampton Middle School in Georgia were instructed by that. their uh, you, uh, they were instructed by their yeah. teacher to write letters to lawmakers calling for stricter gun control laws, um, right? Trying to persuade lawmakers to have stricter gun laws to help prevent another school shooting. That was the assignment for this assignment. Right. You are writing a letter to the lawmakers of the United States. Blah blah blah. Um, that guy wasn't put on leave. What they said was. Well, it's unfortunate this isolated incident occurred. We are, we're appreciative mm-hmm. of those individuals who brought it to our attention. Uh, we uh, we spoke to the teacher. He's been spoken to, and it won't happen again. But you got Correct. sent home on administrative right. leave. Right. Well, yeah, George in California, as you just said, um, highly, highly, highly uh, you're disparaging as far as um, the differences between our states. Um, I did read that. And I just think that the positive thing, I guess you could say, out of all this is that, um, you know, we've known for years that colleges, when you send your little, you know, sweet darling to college, they're going to get indoctrinated. So you better prep them. Right. But now it's seeping down into the high schools and even the junior high. And I mean, I even heard of some kindergartens who walked out like a kindergartner has an idea what a protest is in the first place but the indoctrination of students is really bothersome to me um and i feel like these groups um there's very specific groups in this country who are like okay we're going to get them while they're young we're going to manipulate them and you know brainwash them basically um and then that's how we will continue to you know have a voice and have power in this country and it's really sad i will say if you don't mind um i have a, a couple brave very brave students who while i was on leave they were sitting there during the protest going i, I kind of want to answer her question i want to flip this 
And um, they started a hashtag life because the hashtag for the protest was enough. Um, and they asked for a walkout one month later. Um, so on April 11th at 10 o'clock for 17 minutes, the exact same things that um, the gun protest got, they're asking for to, to be able to um, go in the quad and have the PA and sing Amazing Grace and basically protest abortion. And so when my student went to the administration to ask, um, of course, he didn't get an answer right away, which I was not surprised by, but um, he's going to find out on Monday, actually, April 2nd. Um, and so the school district, I'm sure, is in a precarious situation because how do you answer this question? But to take it one step further real quick is this, this one particular student, I don't know if it's all of them or not, but one student said, whether they sanction this or not, I am walking out of class at 10 o'clock on April 11th for 17 minutes. Wow. Um, so he's very brave. Everybody's calling me brave in this. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Check out, you know, so, and he says, I'm not on Twitter or whatever, but he says it's, it's gaining momentum and traction and kind of inspiring other students around the country who, you know, especially conservative students who never have a voice, and particularly this, on a high school. This is Brandon Gillespie, is it not? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're, we're going to so, be talking with him too. Um, perfect. if one is, yeah. if one is, uh, tolerated, uh, you know, you set a precedent, not you, but uh, the school right. set a precedent. If you can, uh, right. if you can have a protest over gun rights, uh, why can't you have a pro-life protest? I, I mean, um, okay. yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, listen, I'm sorry you went on, went through all that, but I have to ask That's again. Right. You do know your teaching in the state of California, right? <laughs> Oh, Maybe I needed to just have a friendly reminder, and this was an unfriendly reminder, but yes, I am aware. <laughs> well, listen, uh, Julianne Benzel has been my guest. I thank you so much, very, very much. 325 the time. We'll step aside Eric Bushman at the WPAP News Desk, and we'll check your afternoon drive. Back with your calls. It's a Sound Off Friday. Just about any topic, just about any direction you want the uh, the show to go, we'll let you do that. I'm Rick Roberts, News Talk 820 WBAP.